What's up folks, Jay here, and I'm gonna go through and show you how to create this effect here in Adobe Illustrator. Rachel is a member in my inner circle and asked how she could do this kind of effect, but instead of using the Dalmatian dots pattern that's kind of in behind here, she wanted to do a leopard one instead, but just didn't know how to make that happen. So I'm gonna show you how to do this pretty quickly here. It's not too difficult at all. So let's get to it. Shrink my head here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go to Creative Fabrica to get the pieces we need, right? So you've got this uh, kind of cool font here, and then it's the leopard pattern that we need. So I'm just going to go in and type leopard. And we should have leopard patterns. Yeah, there we go. There's a bunch showing up here. And of course I do have affiliate links down below. It's a pretty cheap uh, membership as it is anyway, but I'm just gonna download this one. Looks like we have more than we need. And it's like, it's for unlimited, it was cheap. It was less than $9 a month or something like that. But I think I paid for the whole year. So that is being downloaded now. I'm just gonna drag and drop this over here from my downloads folder. And here we are. We'll just do something similar, A, B, C, D, E. We will choose our font here. I'll just zoom in so you can see a little bit tighter here what we're doing. We will just pick a particular font, something that looks a little more fun. Let's go with miserably lose here. So if we wanted to make each letter a different color, you can just highlight a letter, double click on that swatch or open the colors here. And we could, you know, can make this one kind of like the teal. And then you can just, Select the next letter, make it a yellow, whatever you wanted to do. Or you can click on swatches here and just pick a couple. Uh, let's do the same idea here, pink. And then we got our little orange, right? So you've got the A, B, C, D, E here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna hold option and click and drag. So I'm making a copy here. And you can tell because when you click and drag, you can see the two arrows. Now it's not just the white or the dark, but I'm just doing that so we have, you know, two editable text if we wanted to go change our word for later right so if you're doing something for like a specific dog breed or a person's name and you want to have the font at the ready on your artboard here so you can just easily double click on it right so if we were on something here we all you have to do is double click right and now you've got your cursor kind of hanging out here you can command a to select all of it or highlight however you wanted i'm just this is giving me a little bit of a weird vibe here so i'm just gonna you know pick a pick a blue here we'll just go with a solid color now i'm gonna pick this one and i'm just gonna shift command o which is convert it to outlines and then i'm gonna command c to copy command b to paste in behind because we want to give it this little black outline and then i'm just gonna come over here and click on this which gives it an outline now so if i click off it you can kind of see if i uh, zoom in a little here by holding option and scroll up you can kind of see it's got this little black outline i'm just going to command 2 which is to lock the blue here and i'm going to select this one you can tell because it's the uh, white with the black outline right here command z to drag you back i'm just going to click on stroke here i'm going to curve the edges and then i'm just going to click on this oh a little too much just something noticeable right so it stands off the uh the white page here something to define and then command c and command b again so it's copy and paste behind so i did edit copy and then paste in back is command b so i've pasted another one in back now and i'm just going to pick a different color here just so we can see and i'm just going to increase the stroke size to where this outline would be around this Dalmatian pattern. So kind of something like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger since we're in here. And then we're gonna object, path, outline stroke. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this stroke here that we have around it and, and it'll create its own shape based on that stroke line, right? So path, outline stroke. And now you'll see how it's a bunch of different individual pieces here. So we could you know double click and pull them apart. I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder right here, click on that, and I'm just going to click on this first one here, which is Unite. And now, if I hold down Command, you can see the pen strokes here, right? So if I clicked on this, for example, we could kind of tweak the shape, but you can see how now it's its own shape. I'm just going to now bring this in behind. We're just going to shrink this down to a size so we have these leopard prints a little smaller in here right so we're just going to shrink this down kind of like that and then we're just going to click on our red here 
and I'm just going to click on this background. So I'm going to shift click. You want to make sure that the line is in front of it. So it's going to cut that shape out and pretty much like hide the rest of it. I'm just going to type command seven. So if you want to know what you're doing here, we're, uh, so it's object. Where is it? There it is. Clipping mask make. So it's command seven or clipping mask make and it just pulls that right in there. So again, this is still editable. So if we wanted to make this, you know, the uh, whatever we had, the lighter blue, I'll just double click on it, make it a little lighter so it stands out a little more. Maybe pick a color that looks a little bit better with this. And for argument's sake now, these are repeatable patterns. So you can always just option command seven, which will undo. And it doesn't look like there's anything there, but if I highlight it, you can see shift command D will hide the background. You can still kind of see that there's a line here, right? So we know it's there. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to click on this to give it an outline here and then we'll delete the interior just so we can see it and you know, have a working, working visual here. Um, the other thing you can do here, if you want these patterns, you know, this pattern a lot smaller, is just same thing, option, click and drag here. And you can see that it's a repeating pattern. So we're just going to kind of line them up like that. And then I'm going to select both of these and then hold option and click and drag them both down. And they should somewhat line up here. That looks good. So now I'm just going to grab all four. I'll command G to group them. And now we can make it way smaller so that these pattern prints here, dots are even smaller. And you know what? Maybe we'll go a little bit smaller on these. So I'm just going to Command click these two, hold option and drag them so they fit. And now we can make this even smaller. So I'll just grab the corner here and hold shift to drag it so it's constrained. And that looks like, I think, what we could do here, right? That looks like it's small enough. So you can kind of still see this outline here. And just so you can see this, I'm going to make this guy white. So you can kind of see this line here now right around. I'll just zoom out a little. So then again, the same thing here. I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to cl click on these that I have grouped and then command seven. And that's it. Super simple to do. You can do this with any kind of pattern you want. And then of course you can always still go in and change the blue here. We still have our uh, white and black. It's just for the outline. And then I would make it, you know, fill the artboard here. You could then export as a PNG. But I, what I would do is command C for copy, I would open Photoshop, make it my 300, make it whatever inches you want here, for example, 12 inches, whatever fits here, paste it as pixels, and it's still a vector element until you actually hit return here. So I'm just gonna drag these out so that it fills my artboard. We always wanna make sure that we fill the artboard to the best of our ability here. And then while we're on the crop tool, I'll just drag this up to snap. And then you would just save as PNG if that's what you wanted to do. But you could also just you know export as here. So that's it. Super, super simple, right? And obviously the font that's something like this, if it's more of finding this particular font, we could do the same thing in Creative Fabrica. We can just go look for dotted font, maybe? I'm not even sure. Yeah, there's a bunch. Here, dotted rainbow font. So that one looks actually close to what we're doing. So I'll just download this. I'll just open my font book. There's four versions here. I'm picking one without the black background. It's called dot rainbow three. So then I will just go back into Illustrator here, go into dot rainbow three and look at that. It already has the black outline on it. So we don't even have to do that extra step. I'll probably go optical here. Should bring these in a bit. Maybe actually tighten this up, get the kerning a little tighter there. Kind of like I'm touching almost right. And again, I'm just going to hold option and drag one over here so that we have editable text here if we ever wanted to, right? In this case, I'm just going to shift command O to create outlines. And then I'm going to command C, command B. I'm just going to click on this so we have our stroke now. Make the stroke a color that we can see, like a bright red. Right? Make sure we have it set to curves here. And then I will object again, path outline stroke and then I'm going to come over here click on merge so because it outlined the stroke and put a stroke on every single one of those pieces so if I do that again you'll see every single dot now had this big fat stroke on it right so we're just going to unite here again and then I will pick another let's go with a slightly different seamless pattern here from our same download package 
So we got a few here. I'm just going to hold option, drag again. It's a seamless pattern. So I'll just bring you up to there and then command G to group them, select them both. I'm going to shift command open square bracket, which sends it to back. And you can see that here actually. Object arrange sent to back is so it's shift command and then the open square bracket. And I'm going to hold shift while I shrink that up here. That looks about right. And then I'm while this back is selected, I'm just going to select this uh, red here. And then the same thing, command seven. And boom, Bob's your uncle. That's all there is to it. Hope that made sense. Hope that was easy enough to digest. Let me know if you have any other tips, tricks, or you know challenges when it comes to creating these sort of effects that you see and you know you want to learn how to do it and i'll do my best to make it easily digestible for you see you in the next one